Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 multitasking and also driving of stepper motors. And for the example I using a stepper motor driver, the DRV8825 from Texas Instruments. And if you search on common selling platforms like eBay or AliExpress, you find the chip in a common used module. And this module is mostly used in driving stepper motors for 3D printers. And so we can buy this module very cheaply. And before we start with the module, we have to calibrate the stepper motor current and the modules have a built-in variable resistor potentiometer and on my board there, there are two sense resistors for the two stepper motor coils and they have a value of 0.1 ohm and in the data sheet we find in formula we have the maximum current we can drive our stepper motors i chop and this is referentiated to the reference voltage and we divide this by five times the sensing resistor. So our formula goes about V ref divided by 0 0.5 ohms and this is equal to two times the voltage reference. So we can measure the voltage reference maybe with a multimeter and tweak the value to the needed stepper motor current. So then we can wire up the stepper motor and I'm using 24 volts because the currents are related to the power to the stepper motors and if we use a higher voltage then we can use a lower current by having the same power. So, but we also need the 3.3 rails from the ESP32 development board and we have to tie some pins and the minimal setup we have to use is to tie the reset and the sleep pin to 3.3 volt. Then we can wire up the stepper motor and the stepper motor has two coils and we can use our multimeter and if the resistance between two wires is in the range of maybe 1 to 0 ohms then we are sure that this is the coil. Then we can wire up the first coil to the first outputs of the stepper motors and the second coil to the second output. And the only thing we can mess up is maybe the direction of the stepper motor and we can easily change this by switching the two coils and then everything is okay. Next I use the GPIO pin 21 for the enable pin to enable the whole driver chip and the difference between disabling the driver and enabling is that the rotor of the stepper motor is fixed while driving the stepper motor and if we disable the chip then you can freely spin the rotor of the stepper motor. But maybe for stepping in a 3D printer it's very helpful that a stepper motor don't swing around and is fixed to one position while not moving. Next I use a GPIO pin for the stepping and the stepping is just a change between low and high state of the GPIO pin and every change of the polarity of the GPIO pin is interpreted as a step for the stepper motor. Same is for the direction. If we want to spin the motor in one direction we have to drive the direction pin to low and if we want to drive the stepper motor in the opposite direction we have to put the high state on the direction pin. And last but not least we have three modify pins for some different modes and we can read in the data sheet that we can put every three mode pins to low then we have a full step motor driver with 
one micro rotation for one step and we can also drive all the modify pins to high and then we have a 32 times micro stepping mode and this divides a full step by 32 and we have the rotation angle also divided by 32. In my case I have a stepper motor that needs 200 full steps for one rotation and so we have if we use the 32 times micro stepping then we increase the number of steps to 6400 so this is 32 times 200 so enough waffling around this is my setup for two stepper motors with the esp32 and two drv8825 stepper motor drivers and I'm using the lab power supply for the 24 volts output for the stepper motor and the drivers. And as you see, they rotate at the same time and I'm using multitasking to drive one stepper motor per task. And I show later the source code for doing this. But before we drive deeper into the code, I use my multimeter to show you the calibration. And I'm just hook the ground pin to the ground of the whole circuit. And I'm using the red probe to probe the metal case of the potentiometer. So on the one driver I have round about 400 millivolt and the same on the other driver. But with a small potentiometer this is not so easy to, to set up because if you just rotate a micromillimeter the whole, the whole reading is up or down 100 millivolt. So just be aware this is take some time to do a accurate measure. Then, then I can show you the difference between the 32 times micro stepping and uh, maybe and I'm just change the mode wires from 3.3 volt to maybe ground or opposite and you can see the whole stepper motors are now rotating very fast but it depends on your use case if you want a very precise but slow speed and a high torque maybe or you need a very fast setup and you don't care about precision and it's okay that maybe you you lose some steps on driving your stepper motors And today you can also win another analoglamp.com ESP32 development board or module giveaway. Just read the terms and conditions in the video or inside the description. Okay, let's have a look into the code and first first I show the basics of driving the stepper motors and we just initialize some GPIO pins for our two stepper motors and I'm using three pins per DRV8825 driver. This is the step pin, the direction pin and also the enable pin and the same for the second motor. And if we look into our setup function, we just initialize the GPIO pins and set them in a default state. And if we skip all the other functionality, we have two calls for stepping our single stepper motor. And we use motor one goes 1600 steps in one direction and with a delay of 200 microseconds. The same for stepper motor two same steps and same delay and then we just do this in a loop so let's have a look into the basic functions 
for the stepper motor and this is this function in on the top of our code and we just set some internal gpio pins related to the motor number and then we just do some debug output write the enable pin to low so we enable the driver then we decide if the steps are above zero then we have a positive steps then we but this is dependent depending on your setup so in my case i driving the stepper motors counterclockwise and so we set the direction pin to high and the same if the steps are negative then we drive the stepper motor clockwise and we set the direction pin to low then we just take the absolute value from the steps so we have no sign and we do some debug output just for every step we write the step pin to high wait some microseconds and then we write the step gpio pin to low and then also we wait some microseconds and because our ESP32 is very fast with 240 megahertz, so we can just use a standard Arduino code to drive our pins and don't need to use fancy GPIO register or so. So this is the stepping of without any task. And as you may see with this code, we cannot drive more than one motor in the same time. So if we want to drive more than one motor in the same time, then we have to do some maybe multitasking or timer chopping or what have you. And in my case, I use for the example, the multitasking. So we have some preparing to use the multitasking and I use some event bits for the event group. And also I use two queues to queue the orders for queue the stepping orders for the stepper motor and I have two queues the queue for the motor one and the queue for the motor two and as mentioned the event group and this is necessary to do some synchronizing so let's have a look at the setup function and all we do is create two queues and I just use a size of 10, but you can use other. Maybe we just use one order at a time. So a lower number is also okay. Then we create our event group and this is for synchronizing and I discuss this later. And then I just start two stepper motor task that wait for the orders in the queue and just wait until there is a queue there is an order stepping order in the queue so next we watch our loop function and this is the function we use to drive the two stepper motors and we have just a number of steps and also the direction if it's positive then we have a counterclockwise and if it's negative we have a clockwise rotation then we use the delay in milliseconds this time because the free Artos is a little bit slow. So maybe if we want to use a high speed stepper motor driver, we have to use a different method. But for this example, I use the smallest speed in milliseconds. And then the same for the second motor, some steps and a direction and also a delay. And the delay is proportional to the speed of the stepping. So then we have another order for the stepper motor motors and a third order and then the whole thing is run in a loop. So let's have a look into this function and as mentioned we have four parameters and the first two parameters are for motor one and the second are for motor number two and I set up a structure for the two motors to give the whole structure in as an order into the queue and this is this structure the motor sent structure and we can have a look at this this is in the top and this have only two parameters uh, integer for the steps and an unsigned integer 32 bits this is the delays in milliseconds and then we just fill the structure and send the structure to the queue from motor one this is the order for motor one and we wait up to one second to place the order into the queue and the same for the second motor we just 
place the second order into the second queue and also wait up to one second to place the order. And then we only waiting for the synchronizing. And the synchronizing just waits for two bits in the event group. And if all two bits are set, then the wait function is released. Or if we wait more than 60 seconds, then also this event function is released. But then we can check the return value. And if the return value is our two bits, then we know, okay, everything is okay. The stepping of the motor is over and we know the function is synchronized. And if not, we know our our 60 seconds are over and, and we wait again for the whole loop. So then we just wait another 60 seconds. But if something wrong with our queue, maybe if there's the one task is not responding, then we break the whole function and know there's some error maybe. So let's have a look into the running tasks that waits for the orders. And this is this function. And on startup, we just just get a parameter and the parameter indicates the number of the motor and we have one task number one for the first motor and task number two for the second motor. And then we do nearly the same without task. We set our GPIO pins for the given motor and we just wait for the event queue if there's a new order for this motor. And if, if so, we just get our steps and the delay in milliseconds, do some debugging, setting our enable pin, set the direction pin. If our steps is positive, then in one direction. If it's negative in the other direction, then we get our steps and get without the sign, the absolute value, do some debugging and just loop the steps into our GPIO pins and set the step pin to high, wait the wait time in milliseconds, set it to low and wait another time and so on until we reach the end of the steps. And then we just set the event group bits. If it's motor two, we set the second bit. And if it's motor one, we set the first bit. And then we go to the loop forever. So if there's no order, we just wait 100 milliseconds for the next order. It's just a some delay to give the CPU some time to do the other tasks. So, and that's it. And here a small epitaph for my TMC 2100 chips. Unfortunately, I've grilled them with 24 volts on the reference pin and the magic smoke escapes from the chip. And until then, there's no steering with my stepper motor. So I have to order more of the chips, but this takes up to six weeks to deliver because I'm a little bit cheap and I just order from the cheapest seller in the world. So I hope you find this interesting and hopefully learn something. And maybe if you do so, give me a big thumbs up for this video to support my work. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.